Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. How are your children today? Mashallah. Mashallah. Full class. Ustaz Zafarina. Okay. Okay. Name? Ah. Akil. Smile. Aha. Masha Allah, Masha Allah, Masha Allah. Beautiful. Our children are back to school. Alhamdulillah. Okay, that's very good. We're going to have fun class, inshallah. We learn the deen and we become better Muslims. Uh, when we learn, when we learn the deen, when we learn Quran and Hadith, we're going to be better Muslims. What does it mean, better Muslim? Mean A plus Muslim. There is A plus Muslim, and there is weak Muslim. You want to be A plus or F? F means fire. Ooh. F means fire, hellfire. No, I want to be good Muslim so that I go to Jannah. Shurga, with my parents, with my friends, with my siblings. That's what we do here in class. Okay, children? All right. Let's make dua. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya Allah, we thank you for sending these children, for guiding their parents to see the importance of Islamic learning. May you reward, Ya Allah, whoever support us, even with dua. May you put barakah in those who established IQSS, Institute of Quran and Sunnah Studies, for children, or adults, for Muslims and non-Muslims to do da'wah to them as well, to counsel people, to help people during hardship. Ya Allah, bless this effort and make it only for your sake. Thank you, Ya Allah, for these children, guide them, Ya Allah, make them better Muslims. I mean, very good. Yeah, uh, I want everybody to see me. Everybody, yeah, yeah. Everybody should see Sheikh, and Sheikh should see everybody. I like that. Okay. Yeah, come close, come close. Ah, very good. Come close. Good, good. Who has a question? I am sure Ismail has a question. Or his brother. Yes, Ismail has a question. Go ahead, Ismail. Yeah, string instruments is not a problem, right? String. String, string instruments, okay. But what if, like, that, like electric piano, is that okay? Electric piano. Is it allowed? He is asking. Are you thinking of becoming a singer, a musician? So why are you asking? Ah, and you want to tell him it's haram, you shouldn't. Okay. All right, children, look at me. In Islam, Allah wants us to be serious. If you go to school and you are not serious, what happens? If you go to school, your own school, and you are not serious, you don't do your homework, you don't care about anything. At the end of the year, do you pass the, do you pass or not? Same thing. In dunya, if we are not serious and sin, sincere Muslims, when we die, Allah will tell us, I'm angry with you. So if we play music, if we just sing, have fun, or if we just want to play, that's not right. We need to play sport, something that makes me strong physically. I go jogging, I play soccer, uh, I swim, I ride horses, no problem. But ting, 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 the whole day. 
with my fingers. Ting, 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 ting. Uh, some people do ting, 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 ting. Some people do tasbih. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. Who are better? Both are using their fingers. The pianist is using his fingers. You and me, subhanallah, 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 alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Thank you, thank you. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Oh, I see. So, my dear children, you need to know one thing. We need as Muslims to be serious. So, is it okay, Sheikh? I say, and many ulama say, no. Don't go to piano. Don't go also to guitar, ting, ting, ting. And don't go to anything that has string. Drum, okay, look at me. That's why in Islam, we have compound. When somebody gets married. But ting, 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 it's not Muslims. Muslims shouldn't do, do ting, 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 ting. What is ting, 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 Shia? String, string. Okay, so that's how you answer. Okay? Bismillah. Good. What else? Who has question? Any question? Yes. How about? I, I couldn't hear. Remove, remove the mask and ask. Oh. MashaAllah. How old are you? 11. MashaAllah. You know what his question? How about the Palestinian-Israeli conflict? 11 years old. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Because they see grandma talking, grandpa talking, parents talking. This is good. Good family. People talking about Palestine. Okay. Number one, let me correct something. It's not Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It is Christian, Jewish, Islamic conflict. They want us to believe it's between Palestinians and Jews. No. It's the whole non-Muslims against Muslims. So against Malaysia, against Algeria, against Pakistan, against Saudi Arabia. So all Muslims are involved and should be involved because Jerusalem is not just for Palestine. And Palestine is not just for Palestinians. Palestine is for all Muslims because Masjid, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. You got it? The Kuffar are helping each other. The Muslims are not helping. This is why the Muslims are losing so far. Tomorrow, when the all Muslims get together, peace of cake, we will win and get back Palestine. So that's the problem. So number one, it's between Jews and Christians and all non-Muslims, they helping, even when they don't say, they help hiding. And the Muslims who are not helping the Palestinians like they should. And may Allah reward Palestinians because they are really defending Islam. At least there, at least in Palestine. It's the all duty, duty of all Muslims to help. Okay, my dear children, thank you for asking the question. So what is it, Sheikh? Very soon, the Muslims are going to unite and beat the Jews. Very soon, inshallah. And you know who will do it? You, children. You, you will become like Sheikh Zubair one day. You, you grow up like your dad now. Your dad was like you. Then you're gonna be like your dad. And your grandpa was like your dad. One day you will grow up and remember that. If you are minister, if you are engineer, if you are a doctor, if you are prime minister, you should say, hey, I have to liberate Palestine. Inshallah, okay? There was a young kid, five years old, by the name of Salahuddin. 
When he was five years old, he was already thinking about liberating Palestine because his dad and mom were talking always about Palestine. When he grew up, he became leader of an army and he fought the Jews and he defeated them, the Christians. What is his name? Salahuddin al Ayyubi. Remember his name, huh? This is one of the heroes. Better than Spider Man. Spider Man is not true. A spider will bite you, you become Spider Man. Oh, no. Show me someone who can jump from one building to one building. The man who called himself Spider-Man, he climbed the high rising building, he fell, just lately. The real heroes are Muslims and humans like you and me. So when he was a kid, five years old, his dad asked him, why don't you cry? He, his dad somehow brought on him. He said, cry. He looked at him and he said, the one who will liberate Palestine should not cry. Oh, his father was very proud of him. The one who will liberate Palestine should not cry, meaning should be a man. Doesn't mean when you cry, you are not a man, but you don't cry for, uh, because you fell. And you fall and you, and you start crying. Somebody took your toy, you start crying, take it back. Somebody takes something from you, take it back, but don't cry. Yeah? Your friend in school came and bullied you, took your water. Give me this water. You go cry, take it back. That's it. Don't let anyone bully you in this dunya. Yeah? Nobody's better than you. Good. One more question. Yes, Jamila. MashaAllah, there are many good questions today. Who are obliged to buy what? To buy what? Sorry. Oh, 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 Eid, Eid, in Eid. Very good. Good question. Jamila asked, uh, who, who is obliged to slaughter, to sacrifice in Eid? Eid is coming, you know, Eid al-Adha. We, the Muslims, have to eat. The Chinese have Kung Su, Kung Si Fa Chai. The Indians have, I don't know what. We have Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha. OK, pay attention to this. Who slaughters? Number one, family. If there is family, the family does it. Who is responsible in the family? The father, the husband. Sheikh, can a wife slaughter on her behalf? Can anyone who has the means, money, can do so. The best ibadah ever you can do on the day of Eid is slaughter your animal. Rasulullah Sallallahu did so. Okay? And you know the animals usually, they run away, right? When you want to slaughter them, they run away. Not the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi animals. They come to him. And they tend their necks like this. The prophet peace be upon him, when he wants to slaughter his sheep, the sheep comes and say, why? Because she knows she's going to paradise. And that's the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa Okay, so who does it? Father or husband. Clear? Can the woman, if she has money, do on her behalf? No problem, if she wants. But it's wajib on the breadwinner. Sheikh, my mom also is breadwinner. No, it's not wajib on her. It's optional for her. Is this clear? Inshallah. No, very good. It's not similar to Zakat. Zakat, if you earn money, whether you are male or female, you pay zakat. 
No, because Eid al-Adha is Sunnah wajiba. Is a Sunnah that becomes wajib on those who can. On those who can. Yeah. So the man, one sheep enough for the whole family. For the whole family, one sheep is enough. Left hand. Yeah. So you need to know this. Sheikh, who's supposed to pay? Not your mom, your dad. Now, your dad doesn't have, and your mom has, different. But whoever pays has more pahala. Remember this. So it's not like it's your duty, it's not mine. No, it's not that. If we see a poor person, who gets more pahala? The one who gives him. So whoever gives, same thing. Okay, dear children? Okay. Ibrahim, Yasmin, Shanaz, Rashdan, Shahirin. How is everyone there? Good, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Good. All right. Zoom, the children on Zoom. Do you have any question for Sheikh before we start? No. no. Okay. Yalla. Now, open your Quran. Open your Quran. Did you bring Mushaf Quran? Sayan, can you help with, yeah. with some Qur'ans with the small kids? Yeah. So I have that in the office. Share. Share. Come. Ah. Uh, okay. No. It's okay. Put that mushaf there. Yeah, in between, between them. Go closer, closer to your cousin. No, go, go closer. One, one Quran between two. Everybody comes to Sheikh Zubair class, bring Quran. You must bring your copy of Quran, okay? Okay. Is there another copy? There are. Uh, yeah, whatever, yes. Okay, go to Surah 95, Surah Atin. Watini was Zaytun, page 597. 597. Watini was Zaytun. Okay, all right. Five nine seven. Page five nine seven. Five nine seven. The end. Go all the way to the end. Yes. More, 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 more. And end. Yes. Yalla ha. Ready? Chapter 95. Surah 95. How many surahs we have in the Quran? Raise hand. How many surahs? Jamila. Very good. 114. Satu, satu, ampat. Satu, satu, ampat. One, one, four. This is Surah 95. Yalla, let's read together. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa zaytun. Water is in Amin. 
لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون إلا الذين ولهم أرفا لهم فا 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 إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون إلا الذين Very good. فَمَا يُكَذِّبُكَ بَعْدُ بِالدِّينَ أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ فَلَعَنْ أَذَرِكَ مِنَ الشَّهِدِينَ Very good. يلا. Uh, إسماعيل, read for us without looking. You know, you know this surah. Nice tajweed, huh? As if you are in competition, and they're going to give you first prize. أَوْلُ بِاللَّهُ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِاسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالدِّينِ وَالزَّيْنُونِ وَقُورِ سِينِينِ وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْحَمِينِ لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنْسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ ثُمَّ وَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ Excellent, excellent. Jamila, that way. Can remove this, remove. Children, the mask is on me. No, halas, don't kill yourself with the mask. Alas, mask, you think Sheikh cannot put mask? Alas, when you read Quran, remove the mask. When you eat and drink, put the mask. Ah, like somebody, he loves his mask so much, he wanted to drink. He spilled everything on himself. Even when you are about to eat and drink, you have mask. Yal. Bagus, excellent, very good. Children in uh, Zoom, Shahirin, Shanaz, Rajdan, Ibrahim, Yasmin, who wants to read? Who wants to read Surah Atin? Who's brave enough? I think Ibrahim or Yasmin. Anyone? Mm. Okay, no problem. 
This surah, yalla. What is the title in English? Fig. Do you know what is fig? Do you know what is fig? Fruit that grows where? No. A fruit. It's a fruit. Allah created the fruit. Call teen. My favorite fruit in the world is karmus. Karmus, karpus in Algerian. Why is so important? And why Allah named a whole surah about it? Children, look at the miracle. This fruit, if you eat it with olive, pay attention. If you mix it with olive or olive oil, you become very healthy and strong. It has numerous benefits. And look at me, you bring one fruit of teen, fig, and seven, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tuju, olives. If you eat one fruit of fig and seven olives, what happened to your body? You become very strong, very healthy, pay attention. And you don't age, you don't become old. Although your age is 70, you look like 50 or 40. People cannot believe you cannot be 70. You think Allah will name a whole surah on, uh, on one of his creation just like that. And only one time is mentioned in the Quran. Watini was Zaytun. And Allah started with Tin. You know what they found? They found the olive tree needs the fig tree. That's lately. There is a um, uh, children bug that kills the olives, that eats the olives. Only if you plant a fig tree near the olives that the olives can survive and become better. This is why in my country, Algeria, I always was asking, why always the fig tree is with the uh, olive trees? You know why? The fig, when you take it out, when you pluck it out of the tree, it has some milk, some white uh, juice, it's called milk. That milk, Subhanallah, the chemicals of it kill that bug. The bug cannot come. He can't tahan that. So one, Allah created one tree to help other trees. So what happened, they found, if you eat fig and olive or olive oil, your body kills all the bad cholesterol. You will not have cholesterol. You know what is cholesterol? Cholesterol is oil in the blood. Your, your blood becomes oily and that's dangerous. So it's good to eat fig and olives. But Sheikh, the fig is only one season. Yes, you dry it. You take, you take the fig, you eat it when it is fresh. That's the best. But also you dry and you leave for winter. Oh, so fig, children. People who have constipation, if they eat fig, the fig will help them to release the poop. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm. So I want you to go Google later on. You research fig, F-I-G. F-I-G, fig, F-I-G, benefits of fig. And you find that the Quran mentioned before scientists. And there is a group of scientists in Japan, all of them became Muslims when they learned Surah Atim, because their research was on fig. Got it, children? So tell your mommies and daddies if they want to stay 
young to eat huh? fig and olives. Fig and olives. Okay. Yes. Any question? Hmm. You can ask, huh? All right. So Allah is swearing by the team and the zaytun. Where is the best fig and zaytun? Where do they grow? What's the best land they grow in? Palestine. So Palestine is the land of fig and olives. Do you know in Palestine there is a tree 3,500 years old, still alive? Uh, an olive. Olive lives for a long time. If you don't burn it or harm it, it can survive. There is a tree still in Palestine, 3,500 years old. Scientists, when they studied it, they said, Allah, they were shocked. But before Musa, even before Allah created Musa. Okay? So when you see olive tree, remember the story, the Quran. And when you see fig tree, mm. okay. So Allah swearing by two of his creation, fig and zaytun. What do we see in Yalla, the English? Start. English. The next ayah. Uh, what is Mount Sinai, children? Look at me. There is a mountain near Palestine in the desert of Sinai. What is Sinai, children? Here. Look. Follow me. Follow me the map. Here. This is Egypt. This is Egypt. You see Egypt? Here. Between Palestine and Egypt, this land here is called Sinai. Let me bring it closer. Sinai. Shh. Look here. Let's say what it does. What happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa alayhi salam on that mountain. On that mountain, Allah created a fire. And when Musa alayhi salam was struggling at night, he saw the fire. So he went to the mountain. He thought there are people there. He can ask them questions. Yes. Yes. That? The story? I can't hear you. Remove. Are you what? La speak loud. Of course. I'm proud of all of you. You are the best. Do you know why? Because you came to class. Those who come to class and those who attend through Zoom are the best. And who is better? Those who come to class. I'm very proud of you, all of you. Excellent. And you know who, who I am proud of most? Those who listen and don't talk to each other. Because Sheikh cannot, doesn't like that. If you have anything to say, raise your hand. Ustaz, Sheikh, can I ask question? Yeah? Then I will give you a break. You go, go play a little bit, and then we come for class, and then you go. But you will learn something. And your friends who didn't come, they don't learn anything. Because they just want to stay home. Who learn? Those who come. OK, pay attention. So Palestine. Now a mountain where Allah spoke to Musa, the third one. Look at the next, Jamila, the next ayah. وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ amin English. Excellent. And by this city of security. What city is that? Mecca. So Allah swears by Palestine, by Sinai, 
and by Mecca. So it's not just the teen and the Zaytun, because teen and Zaytun, you find it everywhere. You find it even in Italy, in Greece. But Allah means that place, that holy place, Palestine. Oh, I see. Where all the prophets of Allah, most of the prophets of Allah went to Palestine, including Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where did he do Isra and Mi'raj? Jerusalem. Oh, I see. Allah could have taken him from Mecca straight. No. Go to Jerusalem. From Jerusalem, we take you. So Jerusalem is very important for Islam and Muslims. Children. Yeah? Okay. So now Allah swears three times. What comes is very important. What is it? Verse number four. Yalla, our daughter there, yes. Verse number four, English. You, yeah. English, raise your voice. Excellent. Verily, we created man in the best stature, in the best fashion, in the best mold. Look at him, look at human. Look. Look at me, my head. The head on top, shoulders, hands, stomach, back, legs. Only humans are created like this. Did you realize that? Is there any other creation like humans? Cows? Uh, teacher, monkeys are like us. No, monkeys are not like us. Monkeys, most of the time they put, they stand on four legs. Sometimes they stand, including the Australian animal. What is it? Kangaroo. Kangaroo jumps like this. Have you seen a human jumping like that? Uh, no. That is what they want you to believe, that monkeys are like us. Monkeys are not like us. Why monkeys don't speak? Why do you don't speak English, Malay, Chinese? They, they resemble human in something, but there are many other animals who resemble us, not just the monkeys, but because Darwin, Charles Darwin, Shaitan, the devil human, and the Jewish, British, he's a Jew, Yahudi. He wants you to believe that your fathers were monkeys. My mother was not monkey. My father was not gorilla. If his father and mother was gorilla, that's his problem. Humans come from Adam, alayhi salam, and Hawa, alayhi salam. Don't believe this orangutan teaching you wrong things. We are humans from day one. And monkeys are monkeys. Question, if humans were monkeys, why monkeys still monkeys? Why they didn't change? Children, if someone tells you, we come from monkeys, how do you answer that? We don't come from monkeys. Why monkeys don't come from us? Why not is the other way? Humans turn monkeys. That's the truth. Or a Yahudi, Allah cursed them and turned them monkeys. They were humans like you and me. And turned them pigs. The head of a pig and the head of a monkey. Why? Because Allah told them, don't go fishing on Saturday. And they went and fished on Saturday. So Allah said, okay, you break my law. Look at your faces in the morning. In the morning, when they go up, they're scared. Oh, monkey, my head of monkey. Yeah, you head of pig. Uh -uh. It's not the other way. If our forefathers were monkeys, why the monkeys didn't change today? Why they are still monkeys? Oh, they're gonna change one day, they say. No. It's a lie, this theory called theory of evolution. Yeah, they taught you that, I'm sure. Uh, parents who put their children in uh, private schools, you be careful, huh? There is a price to pay. You only think about dunya. You only think about their dunya. Oh, my children will have better grades. They go to better universities. 
But later on, when they become secular and start giving you a hard time, then you will understand what Sheikh Zubair is telling you. Be careful, sisters. Be careful, brothers. I'm not saying pull your children out. I'm saying follow them, teach them, teach them Quran like now, so that at least the teachers can help them understand they are not monkeys. Okay? So monkeys look like us, but doesn't mean they are humans or humans were monkeys. No. There are many animals. They resemble us in many things. In many things. They eat, we eat. They drink, we drink. They have babies, we have babies. They cry, we cry. You understand? But that doesn't mean we are saved. We are not saved. That's what the kuffar wants you to believe. They confuse you. Huh. Okay. So Allah says, we created the human in the best form. There is nothing better than human. Children, look at me. Fish swim or not? The fish, they swim or not? Very good. Can humans swim? Very good. Can. We can. But did Allah create us inside water? No, but we can go to the water. We can even dive. We go deep like the fish. With what? Look at me. Aqal, intellect. Allah gave you mind to create submarine, to dive, to create oxygen and go deep. To have light and look at the animals, you can even fish them. Mm, good. Do birds fly? Can human fly? Yes. Aeroplane. You make aeroplane. You jump out of the plane with parachute. Who gave you? Very good. Allah gave you mind to think of those things. Very good. Uh, there are animals who live inside the earth. They dig. You know, who can give me an example? Snakes. Huh? Moles. Animals that dig. Rats, raccoon. They dig and they live inside, right? Can human dig tunnels? Yeah, we make tunnels between Kuala Lumpur and Pahang. There is tunnel in near, uh, near Ganting Highland. Oh, I see. So a human is the best. And even in standing, we stand on two feet. And our heads is up. Look at me. We are the only creation. Allah gave the head on top. Meaning we don't bow. Only in Ruku and Sujud. For Allah. But the cow already record. Insects already sujud. Snake always the head down. Only cobra sometimes wants to eat somebody, she does that. But usually the head is always down. Allah didn't create you like this in a record form. Allah created you like this. Only for salat, you do ruku and sujud. Is this clear, children? Okay, continue. Next ayah. English. You. English. Uh, verse number five. Number four. Verse four, yes. Then, verily, sorry, verse five, verse five. Then we reduced him to the lowest of the low. The human, look at me, after Allah make you so high, he makes you so low. When? Look at me, Sheikh Zubair's head is high. Your head is high. You, Allah gave you 
Akal gave you mind, gave you money, gave you this, gave you that. But look at you, you behave very bad. What happened? When you don't pray, when you don't fast, when you go cheat, when you lie, oh, then you are low. Actually, Allah created you to do good. But look at you, what you did. So you are low. Allah is telling you, be careful. Although I created you very important, you can go wrong when you follow shaitan. When you follow shaitan, you are low. Good. Number six. Who wants to read verse six, English? Yalla, our daughter here. What's your name? Yes, you? Okay, go ahead, number six. English. Except. Very good. MashaAllah. I'm very proud of all of you. Very good. What is it? Except those who believe in Allah and do righteous good deeds, then they shall have a reward without end. Paradise. Allah said, I will give you paradise. All of you, your paradise is waiting for you. Children, do you know how much toys, how many toys, how many good things are waiting for you in paradise? More than you think, more than you expect, is waiting for you. Just be good. Pray without mommy and daddy telling you. And do good deeds. Don't be naughty. Don't be stubborn, especially with your mommy. Sai, can you close that door? Otherwise, the AC. Huh? Is this, is, is this clear in your mind? Children, if you are naughty, if you answer back your parents, if I don't know what you do, sorry, all paradise will not go to you. You have to be good huh? and follow rules. Number seven, number seven, Ismail again. Very good. Now Allah tells Oran Kafir. Wahai Oran Kafir. What's wrong, you, what's wrong with you? Why you deny Islam? Why you deny the Day of Judgment? Oh, oh. Faham? Allah is telling Oran Kafir. Why aren't you Muslims? When Allah created you the best and gave you all what you need. Last ayah. Amen. Ikram. Very good. Indeed. Allah says, am I not the best of judges? We should say, Ya Allah, you are. Ya Allah, say children after me. Indeed, you are the best of judges. Ya Allah. Because Allah is asking you a question. Isn't Allah the best of the judges? You should answer. If you don't answer, it means you don't believe he is the best. So you say, Bala, indeed, indeed, Ya Allah, you are. Okay, five minutes break. Go relax in the surah, play a little bit. Don't go out, huh? just here. And Auntie Farina has some bread for you, some food. You go sit down there. I want you to use the surah. Go and know each other. Leave the, leave the Quran, just go there. Five minutes break. Yal. Five minutes break everyone.
Kam, Masya Allah. All right, let's continue with beautiful story from this book, Gems and Jewels. Those who have the book open, for those who don't have, just listen to the story. Okay. Children, you should never wrong anyone. You should never harm anyone. Listen to me. Wronging someone, harming someone deliberately. If you don't mean, that's different. No. For example, you steal some, someone's money. You speak evil of someone and you know that person is not like that. You lie to somebody. You hit somebody. He did nothing wrong to you. You're a bully. You go hit someone. You take something from someone. If you do, you are in big trouble with Allah. Look at this story. Look at this story. We're going to see a story of someone who was wronged. People wronged him or her. He or she makes dua to Allah. Ya Tuhan kami, so and so wronged me. Oh, let's see what happens to them. Open for those who have the book, page 293. 293. Those who don't have book, it's okay. Just listen to the story. Yalla. Ismail will read the story for us loud and clear. Slowly, bit by bit. When I tell him stop, he should stop. So that I explain the story. The dua of somebody who was wrong. Oh, oh. Yalla, close the Mus'haf. Close the Quran. Close, close the Quran. That's it. Now listen to the story. Yalla. Very good. Stop there. The Prophet وسلم, said, Beware. What does it mean, beware? Who can give me another name? Be careful. Be careful to wrong someone. Because that person, between him and Allah, there is no curtain. Meaning there is nothing wrong. He can make dua against you, you are in trouble. Even if he is non-Muslim. Huh? Even if he is non-Muslim. Children, don't wrong anyone. Even if that thing is animal. Cat. You torture a cat. You torture a chicken. Huh? You torture a turtle, it could be ninja turtle. Then becomes ninja turtle and fight you. Takbir. Okay. Never wrong animals. Birds. Birds are singing. Leave them alone. They are choo -choo 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 -choo. Don't go throw stone at them. You're being naughty. Okay. So pay attention to this. Girls. Story. So the Prophet said, don't wrong anyone because that person can ask Allah anything and Allah will, will be with him because Allah doesn't like injustice. Allah doesn't like that you do, you do wrong to people. Okay, very good. Continue. Lufail. 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 Lufail.
he said, why or not? If he does not return it to me, I will speak out and expose him to the masjid of the messenger of the house of the Very good. There was a lady by the name of Arwa. She felt somebody wronged her. Who is that man? Sa'id ibn Amr bin Nufay. May Allah be pleased with you. So she went to this man called Muhammad ibn Amr. And she said, if he does not return my land to me, I will go to the masjid and expose him. It's like somebody come to Sheikh Zubair and say, Sheikh Zubair, if so-and-so doesn't give me back my money, I will put him on social media. I will tell that this man has taken my money. What should I say to him or her? I may say, sabar, wait, we will see. Inshallah, no need to expose a Muslim, this and that. Okay, let's see. Very good. Stop there. Muhammad, this man, bin Amr, knows that man. That man doesn't do that. He's a Sahabi. He will never take property from a woman. He doesn't take even from men, let alone from a woman. He told her sister, Miss Arwa, don't do that. I know this man. He is a good man. He cannot take your land. You are either confused or you are lying. You are either confused or you are lying. Don't do that. Don't go speak bad about the man without evidence. Continue. She made complain. Very good. This woman, she was not happy with what that man said. She went to two other Sahaba and she said, look, this man has taken part of my land. Would you do something? Would you talk to him? Or I go to the masjid, expose him. They said, okay, we will talk to him and see. Don't worry. So they went to see this man. When he saw them walking, he asked them, what are you here for? So now, Arwa, they say to him, Arwa. Arwa came back earlier and said that he wants to kill something on the land. And, then, and she swore by Allah that either this or she will expose you to the masjid of the messenger of Allah of the Lord and the Messiah. We came here wanting to talk to her, but she said. Okay, so they said to him, Arwa said, you have built something on her land. This happens, by the way. This happens a lot in Kampong. People have some land. They don't come visit the land. Somebody comes, build something on it. So we came to inform you that if, if this is true, be careful. If not, she said she will do this So for you to have information. Now look what Saeed ibn Amr said. Very good. He said, I am a Sahabi. I heard the Prophet said, if you take this much, look at me, children. Look at me, this much. This is land. This much, often land. For example, Sheikh Zubair's land stops here. This is my land. I go and take this much from someone's, from the, my neighbor's land. Just this much. This much. From here to here. Some people say, what's that? It's nothing. 
The Prophet said, if you ever take some land from somebody, Allah will put on your neck on the day of judgment like seven heavens. Oh, meaning tie you up. Why did you do that? Why you took land from people? It's not your land. Stop at your land. Some people today, they take one meter, two meters, acre, including countries. Your country is here. Why you take the country of people? Like the British. The British took the whole world. They have small island in the north of Europe. They came, they took Malaysia, they took uh, Australia, they took New Zealand, they took America. They, hey, what is this? You got it? So it's not just you and me taking each other's land. Nations also. So the British, Allah will punish them Yom Al-Qiyamah. Especially those who have stolen the land of others. The French. You take the land of people? The economy of people? They took India. They took everything. Got it or not? Okay. So he said, I heard that hadith. And I would never do that. If she claims this land is hers, let her come and take it. If she claims this is her land, look how good he was. He wanted even to let go of the house he built. He built on his land. She thought this is her land. So he said to them, go and tell her, if she wants this land, she comes and take it with the building. Because he fears Allah. Okay, wait a minute. Doesn't mean he was wrong. He doesn't want problems. Some people are like that. If she thinks this is her land, I would never take even this much because I don't want the punishment Yom al He was a man who feared Allah. Okay, look at the story. Continue. Oh. Oh, 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 did you see the dua she, he made? Children, did you see the dua? He said, Ya Allah, if this woman Arwa is lying on me, don't let her die until she becomes blind. Don't let her die until she becomes blind and make that blindness the reason of her death. Khalas, he turned to Allah and made dua. Ya Allah, if this woman is lying on me, don't let her die until she becomes blind. And make that blindness, when she loses her sight, cause of her death. Look how this woman dies. Let's see the story. When, when, when they told her that's it, she said, okay, I don't need his house. She destroyed his house and built the new house. But she was wrong. But she didn't say, Astaghfirullah, may Allah forgive me. I make tawbah, ma'af, brother Saeed, I'm sorry, shaitan pushed me. May Allah forgive me. She didn't do that. She continued. She even destroyed his house and built the new house. Look, look what happened to her. Slowly, slowly. How much time elapsed? Oh, what happened? She lost her sight. Few years later, she became blind. What happened? Continue. And because she was blind, she used to put her servant with her to her side when she needed water from the well or anything else to eat. One night, she decided. And because she was blind, she used to take her servant with her, especially at night, to guide her. One night, especially to the well to get water. One night, she, she needed to go on her own. Her, her uh, servant was not there. So she went on her own. Well, look what happened to her. She, she, she 
decided to go out without walking, walking, waking, waking. waking herself. And, and as a result, she fell into a well. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi. Why did she become blind? Why did she fall in the well and die? Very good. Because she wronged someone and that someone made dua against her. You want to die like that? No. Ya Allah, I want to die. Good death. Because how can you lie on a man say, because usually women, when women speak, people believe them against a man. You know that or not? There is a problem now. If a woman speaks against a man, most people will think it's true. No, verify. Like also, you should not accuse a woman without verifying. Verify. You just go and lie. So if someone is upset with you, he might not make dua, like Sheikh Zubair. Many times I don't make dua against those who wrong me, but Allah will get that. Somehow. Don't, don't. Don't wrong anyone. And don't deliberately. Because she lied. She start, I will expose him. And the man, you know, if, if you go to masjid and say, he is bad, he, if people start believing. Maybe people believe. So he said, okay. She wants this land. Let her take the land. Not only that, she even destroyed his house. She could have said, okay, you build the house here. Give me part of your land. You know what I mean? No, she wanted to say, I don't need this man. So he made dua. And he told those men, tell her, I made dua against you. Before she died, my children, what happened to that woman? And not see. Very. Imagine I cover your eyes for five minutes now. Just five minutes. I put something on your eyes. You go like, ah, ah, I, I want to, I want to take this off. Huh? Ikram. May Allah protect us. So is it good to rob people? No. You know, I'm proud of you so much. Especially you. May Allah bless you. Okay. One more hadith. And then we call it goodbye. So what we learned today, Surah to Teen, the Surah of Faith, and story of not wronging anyone. This is the character I want to build in your children, parents. Your children need to learn to be good. So Alhamdulillah, you will not have problems with them when they grow up. Listen, not yet, Hadith class. Ah. Last time we did say the importance of obeying parents. Your parents, if you upset them, Oh, that's very bad. That's really bad, children. You should not upset your mom and dad. You have to listen, obey. Some, even sometimes they tell you something you don't like to do. For example, they say, go sleep. Don't say, no, I want to play games. Don't say that. Just go. Listen. Yeah, okay, mommy. Okay, daddy. Kiss them and go sleep. If they tell you, come pray, don't say, oh, until after I have homework. No. Yeah? Okay. Today, we talk about the importance of neighbor. Neighbor, your neighbors. Is it good to eat and sleep with full stomach while your neighbor is hungry? But Sheikh, I live, I live in a very rich area and I don't think my neighbor is uh, hungry. Still, check on your neighbor. Or from time to time, exchange, exchange food. That's good. 
even if your neighbor is Sultan himself. It's neighbor. Okay? Sheikh Muslim or non-Muslim? Priority to Muslim. But how about non-Muslim? Also non-Muslim. Be nice to non-Muslim. You never know. They may become Muslim because of you. And I have seen people becoming Muslim because of their neighbors. When I was in the US, my neighbor told me, you are the best neighbor I had in my life. Because she was lonely, she had only a dog or two, I think two. And she said, you always look after my property when I leave, your wife takes good care of me, she sends me food with the children, thank you very much. I never thought Islam was like this. Huh? Inshallah, Allah guide her. I don't know if she became Muslim or not. But many, many non-Muslims became Muslims because of we are nice. We're good. We give gifts. We exchange food, meno, whatever. Huh? So listen to this hadith where the Prophet said, you are not a Muslim if you eat and go sleep and your neighbor is hungry. Huh? I'm a Muslim. No, you are not. If you go eat, you don't care about your neighbors, you are not a Muslim. Wow, that's scary hadith. Listen to this hadith. Abdullah ibn al-Musawwir radiyallahu anhu said, I heard Abdullah bin Abbas radiyallahu anhuma telling ibn al-Zubair radiyallahu anhuma that I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam say, that a man who filled his belly while his neighbor is hungry is not a good believer. Uh oh He's not a good believer. If I fill up my stomach and I don't care about the neighbors. Many Muslims are like that. Very rich. And there are poor near them. They don't care about the poor. They don't. When you ask them, why don't you help? You have plenty. Ah. Very sad. Very sad. I've seen that homeless near a restaurant asking just for food. People go eat 100 euros, but they cannot give two, three euros. Or food. I give you food. Ah, children. So is it good to go to bed with full belly and your brother or sister hungry? No. How about neighbor? No. So we the Muslims of Malaysia, Algeria, we go sleep full and our Syrian, Yemeni, Rohingya, Palestinian brothers, sisters, hungry. Got it? Allah is saying, why you didn't share your food? I sent some clothes. I sent some teleco. I sent some makan. Alhamdulillah. You did your best. You cannot do every day. That's fine. But you did at least once. You don't do nothing. So if I have some food and somebody near me is hungry, what should I do, children? Give some. Very good. If I have sandwich, what should I do? Half half. If I have two bananas, I give one banana. If I have one banana, split. Don't say sorry, I have only this banana. It's for me. Bye. If I have water, I drink half and give half. Or give all if I'm not if I'm still young and healthy. You got it? That makes you good Muslim. No, mine. And you know, you want to be happy? Give. Share. If you want to be happy in life, you share. 
Sheikh Zubair is very happy when he shares knowledge, when he teaches. Because sharing. Yeah? Look at you, how happy you are when you give to the poor. You give, you give some money to the poor. You feel oh, happy. Allah put happiness because you, are, you did something Allah loves. Who gives more than Allah? No one. Do you know how much he gives per day? All the money we get is from him. All the oxygen we breathe is from him. All the sunlight is from him. All the rain. Do you see how much rain comes? When he gives, he gives. Even the birds eat. Even the mosquito find food. Yeah? Very good. Have you enjoyed the class? Very good. So what did we learn? Three things. What are they quickly? Number one, potato and tomato. Suratin, very good. Number two, the story of don't wrong anyone. If you wrong, Allah is not with you, is with the other person. And number three, hadith about take care of your neighbors. Can you share this with mommy and daddy? Okay, what are they again? Number satu, suratin. Number two, the story of never wrong anyone. Number three, so now when you get into the car, you say, Baba, Mama, we don't this, this. So it stays in your mind. Yeah? Inshallah. Yeah, Allah bless our children, bless their parents. Yeah, Allah, we know that raising children is a big jihad. Have the parents to raise their kids according to Islam. Quran and Hadith. Ya Allah, bless this place. Bless Sister Farina. Bless Sheikh Zubair. Bless all Muslims that who help us. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Assalamu alaikum. Jumpa lagi.